Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we're going to be talking about Liberty University and are they in the early onset stages of going woke? So that's what we're going to be talking about today and the reason why we're going to be talking about that is that because they have a diversity office, they have diversity staff. So basically this is a woke department that they have at Liberty University. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video and again, Liberty University, you know, if you want to talk about the handful of conservative colleges out there, it'd be Liberty University and Hillsdale College. And, you know, Grove City College was a, another college on the uh, short list. And they've had their issues over the last few months. And I think Liberty University is repeating the same mistakes that a lot of other colleges have already made. So let's start out by talking about uh, this article, The Biblical Basis for Inclusion, it's by Sean Muldrow, Muldro, who's basically in charge of diversity, equity, and inclusion over at Liberty University. This is at the uh, Liberty Journal. Uh, it was published last month, April 22nd, 2022, or uh, April, since I still think this is May, by the way. <clears throat> So let's just read it. It's not a very long article. The trending topic of diversity in higher education today is largely being defined through a secular lens lacking an integral theological basis. But establishing inclusion is inherently biblical and crucial to the gospel. We are the body of Christ and each one of us is a part of it. Paul writes, it, writes the Corinthians. And the part of the body we have responsibility as part a part of the body, we have responsibilities. We have responsibilities to respect and encourage the other parts of the as we carry out the individual work God has called each of us to do. It's worded oddly to me. At Liberty University, we are committed to preparing and caring for a diverse student body. But while we can do all the research on student demographics and launch all the creative enrichment programs that promote diversity and inclusion, we cannot operate as one body without standing on, a found, on the foundation of his word. We cannot love one another as Christ loved us if we lose sight of our mission to create a campus community that reflects the heavenly kingdom. Oh, that's key there. A kingdom in which all of God's people are already citizens. Yes, all of God's people are already citizens of God's kingdom because God foreknew those who he preordained to be saved or predestined to be saved, I guess would be a more precise word in this context. So with that said, yes, there is a sense that that is true, but that is not achievable here on earth, much less in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's not an achievable goal to make your university look like the universal church and by universal church i mean the everyone who has ever been saved ever it's not feasible to make a worldly body look like that nor is it really desirable and i mean that in the sense that if it's not achievable it would be a waste of time resources and energy to pursue it that's what i mean by not desirable so otherwise, it's a lofty cloud talk, but it's not practical. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Uh, it's talking a lot more about spiritual gifts than it is about black people and white people, by the way. <clears throat> Liberty's Board of Trustees adopted an important resolution on equity and inclusion in the fall 2018, acknowledging the centrality of fostering a diverse, co-educational student body and an inclusive educational environment reflective of the body of Christ, as well as the need to utilize proactive measures to recruit, retain, and support highly qualified, diverse students and professionals. Keep in mind, if we're talking about Liberty University, Liberty University is a pretty cheap university, all things considered. Uh, a lot more cost-effective than a lot of secular 
universities out there, which is part of the appeal of Liberty University. It's not that expensive for a college. Uh, but along these lines, uh, you see that a lot of this started in 2018. And again, what was going on in 2018? 2018, uh, if memory serves me right, that was around the time where everything was racist. Everything was racist back in 2018. Because, you know, Trump was president. Uh, it was before COVID. It was before most people figured out what transgenderism and grooming children looked like. Which, by the way, we warned you about. Christians warned you about that. But this shows a lack of judgment at the time. You know, if we get, if we go back and remember what 2018 was like, I know that was a long time ago, but that was around the time when everything was racist. And, and at parity levels. And their idea in 2018 was create a diversity hiring staff. Not a good plan. Not a sign of long-term uh, steadfastness. I now lead the talented and per passionate team in the Office of Equity and Inclusion, tasked with developing and implementing initiatives that support the university's desire to have a culturally to have culturally and ethnically diverse students, faculty, and staff free from unbiblical and unlawful discrimination. So, it's a question as whether he would consider affirmative action to be unbiblical. Uh, and I'm not sure whether it's unlawful either, because I don't know, has a, has a school ever been sued successfully for discriminating against white people? I don't think the answer is yes. It, w it wasn't yes at Harvard or Yale or one of those Ivy League schools. Probably won't be a, uh, probably won't be a yes here either. Okay. It is important that we train champion or that we train champions for Christ from every nation tribe people and language really Liberty University can train people from every tribe na or every nation tribe people and language really the language part you guys have every language covered you guys have every people group covered every tribe covered every nation covered like isn't that a little egotistical to even assume that you have the capability of doing you're a college in Lynchburg Virginia yeah you got an online thing going on which is by the way very competitive it's a good thing to have but let's not pretend like this is a feasible feasible goal for one institution to realize on earth rather than the collective church to realize this division recognizes diversity in its pursuit and support of people from varied ethnicities, nationalities, socioeconomic and educationally disadvantaged backgrounds, disabilities, military statuses, and ages. A lot of, a lot of uh, diversity points there that aren't necessarily traditional, which isn't a bad thing, but just noting that. Reconciliation has been... At the heart of our efforts, we have some of the best faculty, staff, and students in the world who embody the biblical mandate from James 1 to be quick to listen and slow to speak. We understand this continued effort must be theologically motivated, culturally competent, and most importantly led by the Holy Spirit. That that all sounds good, but I don't see how it, it, an office of uh, diversity and inclusion and a diversity department serves that goal or can be led by the Holy Spirit. Especially once we talk about this dude's background. The Board of Trustees has continued to follow through with its resolution to invest in and in, invest in an inclusive institutional environment and support the advancements we've made at every level so that liberty can rightly model diversity in, in higher education from a biblical perspective. We are dedicated to providing an excellent academic experience where students can grow in faith together, celebrating their God, celebrating God, the creator who made us all unique and with all 
with the awesome purpose to reflect his image. You know, one thing to note about Liberty University is that one of the uh, groomer or pro groomers that's running for school board where I live graduated from Liberty University. Kind of an interesting thought, but uh, not everyone who goes to Liberty is a Christian, obviously. And this uh, this article is very uh, some presumptuous that everyone who goes to Liberty is a Christian. That's just not the case. Not everyone who teaches at Liberty has ever been a Christian either, Karen Swallow Pryor. Since coming to Lynchburg, I've spent a lot of time in the community watching our students and our leaders share the love of Christ. I love the climate of service here, how Liberty fosters a culture of belonging and establishes a reputation of opportunity. I've seen students give up their free time to serve others. In January, we partnered with LU Serve to host Liberty's first MLK Day of Service and sent 10 teams to 10 different sites or sent teams to 10 different sites where they partnered with local service organizations becoming the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Martin Luther King Jr. set an example of bold Christian service. No, he didn't. So the day was an opportunity for us to do the same. Jesus came to serve, and nothing is more unifying than when we answer the biblical call to give ourselves and our and love our neighbors. I don't know if this counts as plagiarism, as plagiarizing his own quote, but he said this back in this art. He was quoted as saying this back in this article, and he's acting like the. And I guess he's kind of passing this off as original. It is technically possible to plagiarize yourself because you can't just rehash your own material and then pass it off as new. So in that sense, it is possible to plagiarize yourself. just want to be clear about that. And here's an article that Liberty posted about uh, their MLK Day. As you can see, some pretty woke people serving here in that picture. And yes, I'm judging solely because they're wearing masks. So this is the uh, Office of Equity and Inclusion's website, the Diversity Department. Uh, it ta upholding Title uh, Six and Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act while promoting a biblically based perspective regarding diversity of God's kingdom as reflected in our campus culture, maintaining equity and fostering inclusion as accomplished with the foremost goal of glorifying God, providing training and support, and community-building opportunities for leadership, faculty, staff, and students. I don't know how voluntary this is for each of these groups. Utilizing, and here's another key, the most up-to-date content, up-to-date content on diversity, equity, and inclusion competencies. So the most up-to-date, so whatever is coming out of the woke uh, pipeline here, it comes out of the woke assembly line of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And therefore, it's going to be taught by the Office of Equity and Inclusion, or the Diversity Department. Increasing student engagement and retention faculty, staff, research and publications, leadership awareness and responsiveness, and overall campus compliance and safety. So that's what they're about. Uh, th they have a academic scholarship program called LEAD, Leadership Excellence Academic Development Fellowship. And, you know, applicants must have a 3.0 or higher to be accepted, but uh once you're in, you can drop that down to a 2.5 GPA, which, by the way, C's and D's get degrees. That's what that 2.5 means. Uh, must attend two of three seminars per semester held on Saturday mornings. So you got to give up your Saturdays. Must attend at least three Office of Equity and Inclusion uh, events per semesters. So... There's a couple seminars that happen on Saturdays, and then you got a, at least one other event that you have to attend. Then you got to write a one to two page paper at the end of the semester, which describes how you are integrating what you are learning into your daily life. Your woke training must be a full time residential student, and this gives you a scholarship range of one to two thousand or one to one one thousand to twenty. Two thousand five hundred dollars 
and that's just the beginning. And then if you lead with honors, as they say, you get an additional thousand dollars. So up to thirty five hundred dollars. And I think this is per semester. So obviously, uh, let's just go back to let's just go back to some basic terms. One person that's woke in an institution is an infiltrator. You know, like a Karen Swallow Pryor. She's infiltrating. Except I think she did a lot more than just infiltrate. She's more like Spock going to the Romulan planet to uh, teach him how to be a Vulcan and stuff like that. She's more like that, but like in a gay way. Uh, so one person's an infiltrator. A whole department... That's a little bit, yeah. You know, that's we're beyond a beachhead here. They've captured a town here. They have you. They're they're living off the land here. At a minimum, they got Sherwood Forest locked down on their site, and they can just raid, pillage and raid. But uh, again, they're not the good guys in the story. So I'm trying to figure out an analogy that works off the top of my head, but uh. Yeah, they got some territory here. They they've captured some land here. They got some gains. You know, D Day woke D Day just happened, and they're in the city of Khan. I think that's how it's pronounced. So that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like for uh, the prospects of Liberty University. Are they going woke? Well, I think they're at early onset stages. We got a scholarship program that's pretty woke. They got a, a woke department, woke staff, and actually we forgot to talk about this dude's resume, so let's just do that real quick. Sean Mudro, Mud, Maldro is the Executive Vice President of Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity, and serving as Liberty's Chief Diversity Officer, that's CDO. He is responsible for establishing inclusive institutional objectives and programming in the area of areas of community engagement, training, development, recruitment, retention, and accommodation. Mald Maldro has extensive experience in building inclusive environments at some of the world's largest companies, including Walmart and Goldman Sachs. Very woke companies there. And that's a bad sign, I think. So this guy's been like a prof this guy served in the uh sorry this guy served in the woke corporate me he he survived in the private sector being woke. So he grifted the private sector now he's grifting the Christian private sector. And that that's kind of where this guy's at. So like I said, one person's an infiltrator. Maybe two or three's aspiring. But a whole department, that's captured territory there. Early onset wokeness. So that's really all I got to say about that as we talk about Liberty University and how they are early onset woke. So if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. That is the least you can do. And then, again, the most you can do is become a paid subscriber over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join it is a Patreon-like system over there because we don't use Patreon, so we built our own. Uh, and you can support us for as little as $5 a month. So definitely try to do that if you want to. Otherwise, have a blessed day. Let me know what you think about what I think in the comment section below, and I'll catch you on the next one.